I need to let us know that we have some people also who have arrived while this meeting started. We have in the house evangelist Mrs. Kikeloma Ali. That's the Feed Mission Evangelist Ministries. She is the leader there. Praise the Lord. Apostle P. A. Alivi is from the New in Christ Evangelical Church. Is here. All these people are working for God under the Christian Association of Nigeria. Pastor M. O. Ojo is representing Bishop J. O. Ojeladi of the Christian Church International. Reverend J. O. Orimadegun is from Seoul Avestas Evangelistic Church and is the general superintendent. Apostle Paul Adebayo, I called him the other time, ye are the light evangelical church, the general overseer. And now, we have in our midst tonight, I called him before, but it's now uh, to do something special. He's the national president of Christian Association of Nigeria, Bishop Ayokunle. Bishop Ayokunle, by the grace of God, has served the Lord in a very high capacity in the Christian Association of Nigeria, and he has just, by the grace of God, moved to another level. Say amen. And now it's now me tonight to address us simply shortly and to bring on a father in the Lord who will give us the word of life. Welcome Bishop Oyekunle, the national president of Christian Association of Nigeria. Put your hands together for the man of God. You are welcome, sir. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah! Have you have shouted it here or not? You will shout it in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is a privilege, a real privilege. You can be seated. It's a real privilege for me this evening to be given this opportunity to talk to you briefly and welcome you to the presence of the Almighty God, the one that is always doing good, who will do you good tonight in the name of Jesus. We wholeheartedly and warmly welcome Pastor Dr. Baba W.F. Kumuyi to Ibadan. On behalf of all Christians all over Nigeria, especially Christians in Oyo State, you are most heartily welcome to this city. We thank God, Baba that you are chosen to do us good through the grace of God that is in your life this week. Higher will the anointing of God upon your life be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Beloved, I thank God that he is teaching us a lesson that the message of the gospel cannot be preached by only one person but it's the business of all of us. The Deeper Life Christian, Deeper Life Christian Ministry as, is one of the very important churches in the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria and Christian Association of Nigeria. You have been of help, tremendous help to us at the national level. Let me give you one example. The church in Nigeria needed money to do one assignment which we are presently doing for you all so that the future of the church in Nigeria might not be jeopardized. So we needed 20 million from some key denominations and we listed them. One of the two 
want churches to pay that money was Deeper Life Bible Church. We requested for 20 million from some key churches. Baba did not tell them to give us 20 million. He said they should give us 25 million. <laughs> is that not the love that is overflowing? And uh, I can, when you are in leadership and fathers like that are in support, you, your heart will be at rest. I thank God, sir, for this great support that you are giving to small boys like us, that you are put in charge of this big assignment. It is time now for you to hear the word of God roll without embellishment from the throne of mercy through his anointed servant. Join me in welcoming to the pulpit the great evangelist of our time, Pastor Dr. W.A. Kumuyi. Thank you very much. God bless. Everybody praise the Lord. The heavens are opened. Power is coming down. All your problems, all your challenges, Everything against your life. Tonight, everything will vanish your way. Are you ready? Where are you? Father, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, tonight. We know you are going to manifest your love, your mercy, your compassion, your power on everyone tonight in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, everyone will hear, everyone will embrace, everyone will believe the power in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Glorify the name of the Lord tonight. Amen. Bless everyone. Amen. Open the door of grace that everyone can come in. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Every Christian, every church person, every religious person that believes the Bible mentions that name, the name of Jesus. I want to tell you tonight, before Christ went to heaven, he gave us the key to enter into the kingdom and the key to do exploit in the kingdom. That key is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, whatsoever you will ask the Father in my name, in his name. The Father will give it to you. And tonight, I come to talk to you on the power in the name of Jesus. When you have faith in that name, confidence in that name, trust in that name, the power of faith in the name of Jesus. That's a beautiful story, an instructive story, a story that is reaching concerning that name and the way, the manner in which that name worked. In Acts chapter 3, in that same way, that name will do wonders in your life. I said the name will do wonders in your life. I'm reading to you from Acts chapter 3 verse 1. And we're reading through to verse 11. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Verse 2 tells us, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, 
which is called beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple and then in verse 3 it tells us who oh, see peter and john about to go about to enter into the temple asked an arms and then in verse 4 were told and peter fastening his eyes upon him with john said look on us and tonight the lord is saying as you expect as you look as you desire as you ask as you demand something great will happen in your life look on us don't look back sideways any other place look in the direction the miracle the salvation the redemption the healing the deliverance is coming from look on us look at verse 5 it says and he gave heed unto them he looked on them expecting to receive something of them expecting to receive something he got more than he was asking for you will get more than you are asking for he asked for arms and the power in the name of christ give him legs something greater something higher something more he could ever expect i tell you tonight something eternal something that will last forever in your life the redemption of the lord the salvation of the lord something higher and greater and deeper than earthly things the lord will give you tonight i believe i believe as you believe it will be done look at verse 6 we're told in verse 6 the peter said silver and gold abide none you know the man might have said that please go away let me get to the people let the people that have silver and gold let them come and give me something but there's something greater than silver and gold there's something greater than money money can buy a lot of things but cannot buy peace of mind cannot buy miracle from heaven cannot buy eternal life cannot buy redemption or salvation silver and gold have i none but such as i have give i unto thee in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk that man had never heard any statement like that since he was born you might be here today and statements you had never heard utterances you have never heard declarations you have never heard you will hear today but don't shake it up don't say that's new that's strange i never heard anything like that before you see there are people the good people nice people but whatever they had not heard before they say well i never heard that before so I'm not going to consider it the thing that will do you good. You might never heard if you hear only what you have always heard. You'll not go beyond where you are now. But it is because the man gave his heart. He gave his mind. He gave his trust. He gave his faith on what he had never heard in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk look at verse 7 it says in verse 7 and he took him by the right hand why would peter do that because peter had assurance that that name will work wonders in that life and the man because he had never heard it was still there and then peter lifted him up the power of the lord the spirit of the lord 
and your faith in Christ will lift you up tonight. If you were lame, you will rise up and walk. If you were blind, your blind eyes will open and see tonight in Jesus' name. He lifted him up and immediately, 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 when will your salvation come? When will your forgiveness and freedom come? When will your redemption come? Immediately, his feet and ankle bones receive strength. And in verse 8, we're told, he leaping up stood. And he walked. And he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. That kind of miracle is coming your way tonight. There will be life in your soul. Life in your spirit. Life within you. And what you were not able to do before tonight is that night that power will lift you up. You will do it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. And all the people saw him. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And then in verse 10, it says, And they knew that it was he that sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Then in verse 11, it tells us in verse 11, it says, And the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. You'll be a wonder. And people that see you with the power of the Lord coming upon your life and with the change and the transformation and you walking in the way of the Lord, in the strength of the Lord, the people will see you and wonder tonight. How did it happen? How does it happen today? How does it come to you? How does it get to you that the power internally, externally, in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body, the power you never had, you never knew that that power tonight will come upon your life and turn everything around and make a dramatic change in your life. How does that happen? Look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, And his name, the name of Christ the Savior, and his name, the name of Christ the Healer, and his name, the name of Christ our Redeemer, King, and Deliverer, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. In our presence tonight, where you are, that miracle coming from heaven, coming upon your life, will be demonstrated. Everybody will see in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I will see a miracle in my life. Others will see a miracle in my life. The transforming power of the Lord will come to you tonight and will transform every part of your life. I've read the story to you. I'm picking this story and I'm explaining and applying the story under three subtitles. One, two, and three, number one, paralyzing situation and necessities without Christ. Before that name heard, before that man heard of the name of Christ, paralyzed, having needs in his life because it was without Christ. That applies to you, that applies to everyone, everyone here, 
everyone in our country, Nigeria, everyone in all the countries of Africa and beyond, this is applicable to you, to everyone. Paralysis situation and necessities without Christ. Number two is perfect soundness through the name of Christ. When that name is declared unto you, the name that brings salvation, the name that brings healing, the name that brings deliverance, that name, there is the perfect soundness of soul, of spirit, and of body that comes to you through that name, the name of Jesus. And tonight is your night. And when I mention that name, as I pray for you, you must expect. And when your believing explodes or gets contact with my declaration, a miracle must happen in your life. Perfect soundness through the name of Christ. And now, number three, is the present salvation here today. Because Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Present salvation with new nature from Christ. New nature from Christ. Are you expecting? I said, are you expecting? It will happen according to your expectation, according to your faith in the name of Christ, in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, paralysis situation and necessities without Christ. Now, if you remember about this man that we're reading about, he was paralyzed. He was born that way. He was helpless. He was born that way. He was hopeless. He was born that way. He was like a parasite, dependent on other people he was born that way he was carried he couldn't have his own strength he couldn't have his own ability he didn't have the agility and the mobility to be able to move from place to place that was in his life before or since he was born can i tell you something before you meet christ without christ you are paralyzed inside. You are paralyzed in your spirit. You are paralyzed in your soul. You are paralyzed in your personality. And there are things you want to do, you cannot do. Without me, you can do nothing. A big dream, a great vision, and a great sight, a great ideal. A great proposition, a great thing, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. Especially in your spiritual life. You've read about other people, you've heard about other people. I want to rise and walk by faith, and walk in righteousness, and walk with the ability of heaven. Because of the paralysis situation in which you were born, you can't do that. Let me show you in Psalm 51 verse 5. In Psalm 51 verse 5, it said, In sin did my mother conceive me, and in sin was I born. I was shapen in iniquity. That was the paralyzing situation in which every man was born. And so you couldn't live a righteous life. You'll be wobbling if you try to walk. You will be falling if you try to walk. Walk in righteousness, walk in purity, and walk in life, in life above reproach. You could not because the power to live such a life was not in you until you meet Christ, the paralyzing situation of every man. The paralysis situation of every religious man. You know, religion cannot supply that infirmity, that possibility in your life. You still paralyzed in your spirit, paralyzed in your soul, and you have necessities that 
you cannot meet and nobody can meet that which you behold I that was a king a king the king David and if the king David said that the same thing with you behold you were shapen in iniquity and in sin did your mother conceive you that's why we're told in Romans chapter 7 in Romans chapter 7 reading from verse 15 the necessity of our lives the hopelessness of our lives the helplessness of our lives the impossibilities of our lives you want to do right but you cannot without christ look at that man again laid down paralyzed having hopelessness and helplessness in his life romans chapter 7 verse 15 it says for that which i do i allow not like the paralyzed man in my mind I want to get there. I want to jump that hurdle. I want to stand straight. I want to stand firm. And I want to walk straight. But that which I do, I allow not for what I would. That I do not. You know the way of righteousness. You know right from wrong. You know this is the way a gentleman an honest man, a respectable woman, an honorable woman ought to live in the public, in the private, but because you are without Christ, you have a good intention and you have a good desire, but it says that which I hate, that I do. How many times have you done something and then you say, what's wrong with me? How could I have done that? I shouldn't have done that. Well, it's because of that paralyzed institution and necessities, because you are still without Christ. But tonight, Christ is coming to you. I said Christ is coming to you. And as you sincerely accept, believe, embrace, and you say, yes, Lord, I've been waiting for this hour. I couldn't do that. I couldn't live right, I couldn't talk right, and I couldn't behave well because I was without Christ. But now I come, and I'm going to live a life in Christ, through Christ, by Christ, a life different from the life I've ever lived. Look at verse 16 there. It says in verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. If then I do that which I would not. Look up here. There are teachers that will teach their students. Don't act like this. Don't behave like this. But they themselves, they break the rule and the commandments they give. Why? They know what's right. There are fathers that will tell a son, now, my son, don't do this, don't do this. And then that father himself will do that wrong thing. Why? He doesn't have the power to do what's right. There are mothers, they know the right thing. They'll tell their daughters, now, my daughter, leave a respectable life live an honorable life live a life that when it comes to the time of marriage the person to marry you will not discover you've done this you've done this you've done that and then the fellow might dump you and that same mother instructing the daughter don't do this and don't do this the mother herself is doing that thing. Why? Without Christ, whatever you know, whatever you instruct others, counsel others, they shouldn't do, you yourself will do. Because it says, if I then do that, I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. In verse 17, it says, now then, 
it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. It said, it's involuntary. I can't help it. Without Christ, you cannot live a righteous life. You can spend the whole day in church. You can spend the whole day lying down and rolling on the ground and saying, God, help me. God, I want to live righteous. If you don't have Christ, salvation in Christ, eternal life in Christ. If you don't have Christ, you'll be paralyzed and there will be need and necessities in your life. You'll not be able to live right. You can preach it. You can declare it. You can counsel it. You can tell other people, don't do that. Don't do that. But yourself, you don't have the power. You'll be like the man at the beautiful gate. Carry it there. And you cannot rise up by yourself. You cannot live right by yourself. But praise the Lord tonight. I said tonight. I said tonight. That transformation will come. That salvation will come. That turning around in your life will come in Jesus' name. You're not being like a father telling the child, like a mother telling the daughter, do as I say, but don't do as I do. Mommy, you told me this is not right. And mommy, you are doing the same thing. Shut up. Just do as I say. Don't do as I do. And you'll not be like, you know, those who counsel other people. Live right, stand up, and stand straight, and stand up for Jesus. But to yourself, you only say, like the Pharisees, as I say, not as I do. Today, transforming power will come upon your life. A change will come upon your life. You'll be able to say once, I was blind, but now I can see. You'll be able to say what I didn't have power to do, to live right now. That power has come from heaven from tonight. I said from tonight. I said from tonight. You'll be able to live right. Who am I talking to there tonight? Amen. Amen. Transforming power will come in your life in Jesus' name. Look at the man again. We're coming back to the story in Acts chapter 3. Point number 2 now is perfect soundness through the name of Christ. Perfect soundness through the name of Christ. You understand? Christ is Savior. And his name will do what he will do. Christ is healer, and his name will do what he will do. Christ is the lifter of the one that will lift you up from that dungeon and from that situation of paralysis where you're lying down. Christ is your answer, and Christ is your solution, and Christ is your savior. Perfect soundness in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your profession, everything that concerns you, perfect soundness, through the name of Jesus Christ. Look at that, Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Silver and gold are I on. Peter the apostle was telling the man, I'm not the first person that will pass here. Others have passed through and they gave you silver and gold. But the silver and the gold... The money and the material things will still leave you the way you are. If I came, and like other people, and I give you what others have been giving you, the silver and the gold, the money and the material riches, if that's all I can give you, 
it will still leave you the way you are. There are some things, my friends, my brothers and sisters, that money cannot do. There are some things that money cannot provide. There are some things that wealth cannot provide. There are some things that material things people may give you. And then throw it at you, and throw it at you, and throw it at you. That money will not change your heart. That money will not give you salvation. That money will not give you a miracle. That money will not take you from earth to heaven. And so Peter said, I'm not going to play the same game that others have been playing. I'm not going to hand over to you, just give you hand handouts and so that you can have this and that, silver and gold, a vine on board, such as I have. Peter, how do you know you have that? Such as I have, I have the name, I have salvation. My name is written in the book of life. I have forgiveness. Peter said, I have something that I want to deposit in your life. I have faith in the name. I have salvation in the name. I have eternal life in the name. I have strength and authority in the name, such as I have. It's wonderful when somebody preaches salvation and he himself has salvation. It's wonderful when somebody preaches eternal life and he himself has eternal life. It's wonderful when somebody preaches purity of heart, holiness of life, and he himself, by the name of the Lord, has a present day experience of that same holiness of heart. And so Peter said, I have something. I have the name, I have the power, I have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, Peter was very definite. He said, Jesus of Nazareth. You might have a Jesus in one corner somewhere who does not have the mark of the nail in his hand. You might have a Jesus in one corner somewhere who does not have the, the piercing of the, of the spear in his body. You might have a Jesus somewhere who has not died and risen again. But the Savior, but the Redeemer, but the one that brings eternal life, the Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died for you. And he rose again. The Jesus of Nazareth who is able to take your life and change your life. In the name of that Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And it happened. I said, and it happened. I said, and it happened. It will happen tonight. Why? Because Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why? Because the name is as mighty today as it was yesterday. And that name will turn your life around. Possibilities will be, impossibilities will become possible. Paralysis will vanish away. Your sin will be taken away. New life, new life, new life where power from heaven will come upon your life even tonight in Jesus' name. That's the name, that's the name that brings us salvation. That's the name that brings us healing. That's the name that brings us deliverance. That's the name that brings heavenly blessings upon our lives. And praise the Lord tonight, it will come to you. I said tonight, it will come to you. Look at verse 7 there, in verse 7. And he took him by the right hand. Peter, why are you doing that? Oh, because I know, I've mentioned the name of Jesus. And I know the name of Jesus must transform the life of this man. And he lifted him up. Now as you are there, 
and we mention the name of Jesus and somebody is paralyzed, give them a hand and tell them the name had been pronounced on you. Give them a hand, lift them up, they will rise and walk. You have somebody there is blind and then we mention the name of Jesus, that name will drive away the blindness in their life. Give them a helping hand. Talk to them. Papa, mama, boy, girl, open your eyes. Now you can see and show them something to see. A miracle is right there. And then those who have anything swollen in their body or any infirmity, any kind of disease, you tell them, even leprosy, as to show them the name had been mentioned. That name will take away that leprosy and that incurable disease in Jesus' name. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately, somebody shouts, immediately. What's another word for immediately? Now, instantaneously, that same time. Other people say they'll come back and get it tomorrow. When you come tomorrow, they still say, I'll come tomorrow. Do you know the people whose language is always tomorrow? Tomorrow? That's what Pharaoh said to Moses. Moses said, there's power enough here to take all the frogs out of your land. And to get all the frogs away that they will not bother you anymore. And then Moses said, Now, Pharaoh, tell me, when do you want all these frogs to go away from your land? And he said, Tomorrow. And the people always say, Tomorrow, I'll do that. Tomorrow, I'll believe. Tomorrow, I'll repent. Tomorrow, I'll have salvation. Tomorrow, they are relatives of Pharaoh. I will not be a relative of Pharaoh. I'll not be a brother or sister to Pharaoh. I didn't hear you. I will not get into the same mindset of Pharaoh. When is your miracle? When is your salvation? When is your redemption? Christ has come to set you free, to forgive you, to change your life, to turn your life around. And immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us there, and he leaping up and walked, and he entered with them into the temple, Walking and leaping. He couldn't do that before. Walking and leaping. He couldn't move before. Walking and leaping and praising God. The praises of God will be in your mouth from tonight. The Lord will put a smile on your face. The Lord will turn your life around. All the pressure of sin upon your life the Lord will lift it up and take it away in Jesus' name. The pollution of sin, the defilement of sin in your life, Christ is coming to you tonight. It will take all that defilement, all that uncleanness, all that pollution of sin away from your life in Jesus' name. The man was tied down by power greater, higher, stronger than himself and when the name of jesus was mentioned that power that pinned him down that power that held him captive that power was taken away the power of sin will be broken from your life tonight free free you'll be free tonight in jesus name Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, Faith, through faith in that name, in the name of Jesus, 
It's your faith and your connection and your acceptance with the name of Christ and the assurance you have that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed, shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be forgiven, shall be free. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will receive the miracle of that name. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Somebody is waiting to be strong. I said somebody there is waiting to be strong. And it's faith. Faith in the name. In the name of the one who died on the cross of Calvary. In the name of the one who gave himself for us. And then he rose from the dead. The name of the risen Christ. Of the saving Christ. Of the healing Christ. That name has made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him, given him, given him. The name will give you something tonight. The name of Jesus has given him this perfect soundness. This perfect salvation and this perfect eternal life and this perfect uh, health that you see perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It will happen. Look at Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there perfect soundness in any other. Neither is there redemption in any other. Neither is there forgiveness from heaven in any other. Neither is there freedom in any other. But it is this name, the name of Jesus, the one who died for you, who shed his blood for you, for that you have that salvation, you have that healing, you have that deliverance, and tonight is coming to you. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, whereby we must be healed, whereby we must be delivered, whereby we must be forgiven, whereby we must be set free. It's that name. And once you accept that name, you believe in that name, you put your trust and confidence in that name, tonight, he will save you. Tonight, he will heal you. Tonight, he will deliver you. Tonight, he will transform your life in Jesus' name. Let me come to number three now. Point Number three, the present salvation. Present salvation. Anything Christ did before is bringing it to the present time and is bringing it to your time. Whatever he did before, he will do it in your life tonight. Present salvation. Present deliverance. Present redemption. Present healing. Present life, abundant life, eternal life present salvation with new nature from Christ new nature from Christ new nature from Christ look at that man we're talking about in Acts chapter 3 that man had a new life a new nature a new ability a new power what he had not done for 40 years, 40 years, 40 years, he was able to do. You know, there are people that say, you cannot teach the old dog 
a new trick. They say they're too old for salvation. They say, have you not heard a fool at 40 is a fool forever? Have you not heard a paralytic man at 40 is paralytic forever? Have you not heard a sinner at 40 is a sinner forever? Have you not heard a helpless, hopeless man, woman at 40 is hopeless and helpless forever? Without Christ, that may be true. But with Christ and faith in God, all things are possible. I didn't hear your amen there. He was 40. And what he had not done in 40 years, the new life he didn't have in 40 years, and the new power he didn't have in 40 years, and the new life, eternal life, he didn't have in 40 years, and the perfect soundness, healing, deliverance, redemption, he didn't have in 40 years, he added that day. I want to come and tell you now, if I could come to you there and look at you face to face and tell you what had not happened in 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years in your life, tonight it will happen. Present salvation with new nature from Christ. Look at Acts chapter 3 verse 19. How will this happen? I want it. I want that salvation. I want that eternal life. I want that new life. I want that heavenly life. How will it happen? Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing will come tonight from the presence of the Lord. The times of renewal will come tonight from the presence of the Lord. And the time of reformation, transformation will come tonight upon your life from the presence of the Lord. He's watching right now. He wants to see the people that will say, Lord, I am here. What I wasn't able to do all those many years and live a righteous life and live a straightforward life in secret and in public, anywhere, everywhere, I find myself. What I couldn't do before, I want to do from tonight. I want the times of refreshing to come from the presence of the Lord upon my life tonight. It says, if that's your desire, if that is your decision, and if that is your expectation, repent ye therefore. What does that mean? Turn around and change your mind. I thought I'd be doing like that all my life through, but now I turn around and I'm going to have a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of direction. And I want to now focus on the Lord who is able to give me forgiveness and give me freedom and give me salvation and give me healing and give me deliverance. Lord, I repent and be converted and let his power, the power coming from Calvary, the power of the cross, come upon your life and change your life. Even from tonight, it will happen in Jesus' name. Now, he also gives you a new nature. A new nature. You see, the nature of the bird makes it to fly. The nature of the fish makes it to swim and the nature of man when that nature is changed and he gives you the nature of Christ that nature of Christ will make you to stand upright to labor upright to act upright to talk upright and to live in the way that Christ wants you to live that nature is coming to you now the Lord will transform your life the Lord will change your life. New life. 
abundant life, heavenly life, Christ-like life. He will give unto you in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter 3, I'm looking at verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards what? He has been waiting for you until this hour. Long-suffering towards you. Long-suffering towards everyone here. And he says, not willing that any should perish. God is not willing that any should perish. I will not perish. I I will not perish. I will not perish in sin. I will not perish in sin. I will not perish in the hand of Satan. I will not perish with the world. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all, 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 all over there, all over there, all over there, but that all should come to repentance. The moment you come to repentance, you come to redemption. You come to salvation. You come to forgiveness. You come to freedom. And you come to accept and to have and to embrace the new life and the new nature from Christ. When is your salvation? When is your forgiveness? When is your freedom? When is your healing? When is your deliverance? And when is your dominion? When? When? is coming to you right now and all you need to do is to say lord i turn away from my sin i believe on the lord jesus christ and that forgiveness and that salvation and that freedom and that new life and that new nature will come to you right there where are you i said where are you you are there heaven will see you there Christ will see you there. And the power of his resurrection that brings redemption will meet you there tonight in Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You're saying, Lord, I am the man. I am the woman. I've been paralyzed in my personal life. There are things I wanted to do. I wanted to live straight, talk straight, act straight, be honest, be truthful, be upright, be righteous, had good intention, but I could not. And the moment of decision has now come that the Lord is saying, You want the power of Christ from Calvary to get to you now and to turn your life all around this day, this time, immediately it will happen to you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You want that forgiveness? You want that freedom? You want that transformation? And you want that new nature, the nature of Christ, to be implanted into you. Wherever you are, raise up that hand and say, Lord, I am here. Religion does not save. You know your life. And you know you need this forgiveness and this freedom. You need this salvation that comes from Christ. And Christ alone, where are you? Raise up that hand and say, Lord, here I am. I need, I want, I believe, I embrace 
Your salvation tonight is of that hand. If you're raising up your hand, you please stand up. Identify yourself. Who are you? You're raising up your hand. That's right. God bless you there. That's right. God bless you there. Far at the back. That's right. God bless you there. Over there on the side. 